someone will look at you in something like this, you know, you can actually tell a lot more about a person just on the outside. Or actually the tattoo parlor that I originally got this tattoo in, uh, and it said, if tattoos didn't hurt, that everyone would have one. How do we define a tattoo? Oxford states it's a mark, a person or a part of the body with an indelible design by inserting pigment into punctures in the skin and then make a design in such a way. But what is a tattoo? It's the whole idea of like self-expression, the way things are, like things are being done that, you know, just look absolutely phenomenal. This is Jason, and although he looks like your typical Wall Street banker, he's actually a spectacular tattoo artist. I mean, there's a certain level of professionalism given by working in a shop and being surrounded by other people that are in your field. You can really improve what you're doing, but at the same time, like, you do what you can. So if you went to prison, would you ever get a prison tattoo just to say that you got one? Oh well, hopefully I don't ever go to prison. I um, <laughs> tattoo artists are, over the years, I've found many, many, many inmates getting tattoos. I've found all the tattoo equipment. It's, it's an art. However, Penitentiaries are viewed as a notorious place to get a tattoo, which have put them in a negative light. I personally think that, you know, it kind of delegitimizes what people do in shops. I started in the program at the Correctional Staff College, August the 12th, 1982. If I walked into a cell and there was an inmate doing a tattoo, what I did was stop. Now, I want the ink. I want every piece of hardware. I'll discuss a charge. I might not charge you at all. Tattooing was a stigma, as we know today, for everybody. Tattoos have been a, an intricate part of inmate society forever. But simply looking at prison tattoos does not suffice. We must refer back to their cultural roots to fully understand their significance. The word tattoo derives from two origins, from the Polynesian word ta, which means striking something, and the Tahitian word tata, which means to mark something. The earliest of the tattoos have been found over the building of the pyramids in Egypt. As the empire expanded, so did tattoos. Britain used tattoos for ceremonies and family crests. In Japan, the Japanese adopted tattoos to bodysuits around the 1700s and were associated with spirits. Instead of tattoos being connected to criminals, gang members, and sailors, the 70s helped demolish the stigma of tattoos in North America. Tattoos now depend on as much of what they are as how and when they're given. I've drawn myself pirate ship wheel, koi fish, Grenades. Teardrops, the third one means you've killed the close rel relative. It, there's certain, there's stigma to tattoos. If your work's good, then, you know, it doesn't really matter where you're doing it, as long as, you know, it's like a clean environment. The problem it. is, in this day and age, as we all know, there are many, many, you know, transmittable diseases. Hepatitis A, B, C, they get worse. I have literally no problem with tattoos. I do not have one myself but I'm not against it in any means. That's just not what I do. Now, if I were to get a tattoo, the Los Angeles Rams, I would have that. But that's, or, or my daughters, I should say. It was a tattoo that he has, actually the first tattoo that he got. Did you know him for a long time? Uh, I knew him for about seven or eight years, so unfortunately, nearly half of his life. It was pretty hard, and uh, getting the tattoo, you know, sort of just helped me deal with it and get over it. Between both these times, I drew a really thin line It's nothing I planned, and not that I can 
But you should be mine across that line.